All right. Trying a new uh, camera setup, so bear with me. Let me know if it sucks. I'm gonna keep looking over at my screen instead of the camera, but I'll do my best. So I'm Dr. Bill Beard. It's the Dr. Bill Show. You probably know that already. Uh, I'm getting blinded by this light on my camera here, so I can't read my notes. Uh, what, would, what are we talking about today? If I can get my vision right. Uh, really, what shoe should you be wearing when you run? Um, I've covered this a couple different ways before. I did a webinar on this. Uh, I've talked about this on Facebook Lives. But uh, I pulled up a research article. Let's look at this first one. Um, and when I was just reading this article, I was like, you know, there's so much misinformation surrounding this topic. And then an article like this comes out and it just kind of highlights the misinformation that can be uh, distributed and kind of built upon that gets people in the basically a bad situation overall. So uh, let's dig into this. So the title of this article, this just came out uh, three, four days ago. Motion control shoes reduce the risk of pronation related pathologies. We'll get to that. And recreational runners, a secondary analysis randomized control trial. So it's an RCT. Uh, so 372 recreational runners were randomized. Here's where the first flaw comes in. This is my opinion, right, of this uh, article. Uh, 372 runners were randomized to receive either standard neutral, like a just a flat, you know, normal running shoe, or a motion control shoe. So there was no um, homogenization of, oh, you overpronate, so we're gonna put you in the shoe, or you don't pronate, we're gonna put you in a neutral shoe. We're literally just putting people in shoes, um, which maybe that's not as bad as trying to base it off of uh, what their foot is doing or not doing. So then they followed them for six months, and what they were looking for were running injuries that occurred during this period were registered or classified as either being pronation related, which they highlight, Achilles tendinopathy, plantar fasciopathy, exercise related lower leg pain, and anterior knee pain. And then the other classification was other running related injuries. Um, again, so first flaw we're not really deciding like why we're putting the shoes on people. We're just putting r people in random shoes. Then we're saying that there are running injuries that are highly correlated to overpronation, which may be statistically true, but let's talk about that. Now we have this category of injuries and then we have other running injuries. And we're saying that the shoe is the variable that matters when I can promise you, we may look at somebody over pronating excessively and say, you know what, you have um, a bit of FAIS going on and we're actually not going to work on your hip, we're going to work on your ankle and foot to improve that. And now they're saying that they don't even have that categorized here. So we've kind of shut down our scope and said that these injuries are categorized here, these other ones are not. And then we're gonna say, oh, the shoe helps with these pronation related injuries. So you can kind of start to see the flaws. Um, so during the study, 25, 25 runners sustained pronation-related running injuries. 68 runners sustained other running-related injuries. Runners wearing the motion control shoe had a lower risk of pronation-related running injuries compared with runners who wore a standard shoe. But they don't know if those people pronated before, which you all should, um, should be overpronated, um, or not. So again, this is a not... It's just not a good study. So then you could re really easily see uh, somebody out in the marketplace or maybe you know somebody that works at a running shoe store or somebody that's Googling stuff or this pops up in their newsfeed and it just says motion control shoes reduce the risk of pronation related pathologies or injuries. And they're like, oh, cool. And then you go to a running shoe store, they tell you you pronate and you're like, man, I read this or I saw this study that uh, somebody put up or I you know, just saw on Google. And then you're like, dude, that's what I'm gonna do. So, A, you can see that this study's flawed. When you look at trying to pair running shoes with, um, you know, foot shape, the way that your foot moves, which may be a better approach than just this randomized throwing, you know, shoes on people and seeing what happens and categorizing injury. What we see happens, and this comes from actually the US Army and it, actually multiple branches of the military, um, so this is back from 2010, 
And this is a quote from Bruce Jones, MD, who's the Entry Prevention Program Manager at the U.S. Army. He said, we found no scientific basis for choosing running shoes based on foot type. And I've talked about this before. Um, the Army study had a little over 600 soldiers, and they did try to put people in a, sh a uh, motion control shoe if they pronated, in a neutral shoe if they didn't, and then they looked at where their differences. What they found out was that if they put somebody regardless, I mean, they have a control, right? So there are people over here that regardless what their foot's doing, they're in a neutral shoe. Um, the people that picked a shoe or a shoe that was comfortable, sorry, was the control there. Um, if they had a shoe that was comfortable, that was the biggest uh, outcome measure for reduced injury and increased performance. And um, he talks about this down here a little bit. Um, says that another uh, military physician looked at over 9,000 pair of feet, manually measuring arch height as well as taking foot imprints. Um, and then the most recent Marine recruit study looked at 1,400 men and women that were divided into two groups, two groups at random with one group receiving shoes matched to their foot type and the other group receiving stability shoes. Again, I kind of have an issue with how they're going about deciding where to put this. Um, there's been uh, counterpart studies done in the Air Force and Army as well. Uh, so it's just basically Jones says down here at the bottom, you can't simply look at a foot type as a basis for choosing running shoes. If you want to prevent, prevent injuries, you should choose a shoe that you like and that feels comfortable. So that's what kind of is shaken out of this data that when you pick a shoe that feels good to you, because you got to think your feet are sensory organs. There's about 8,000 free nerve endings in the bottom of each foot and it's comfortable. Your, your foot's going to work better. So this is where we need to get into the part of the conversation of, you know, I'm the title of this video, um, undecided, but let's just say right now, it's what shoe should you be wearing or running in? How do you go about deciding that if it's not having somebody, A, watching you walk and then putting you in a running shoe, hopefully it doesn't make sense to anybody, right? That if I watch you walk, that's not running. Those are two totally different movements. You have to call on a lot of different things um, in those two movements. That's like kind of watching somebody deadlift and then coaching a squat, right? Or giving them uh, something to aid their squat. That, that, those are two different things. So what do we do? You, a consumer, would definitely wanna say the shoe needs to be comfortable, right? And you know, comfort is hard to dictate when you don't run in the shoe. So a lot of running shoe stores will let you run in them for a few days and still bring them back. Um, online, that's really uh, common that you can actually use them for up to 30 days um, with minimal wear and still send them back. But comfort really should be based on, do you have enough room in the, the toe box or the forefoot aspect of the shoe? And that's both width and length. Uh, common statistic is most Americans wearing a shoe that's one and a half times too small, and that's not length, that's width, right? Um, outside of that, does it cup your heel correctly? So there's uh, what's called a heel counter. Uh, aggressive heel counter is gonna lean into your Achilles or your heel a little bit and kind of grab it. Um, a neutral heel counter is going to be straight up and down. So like all these things matter based on like what your foot's like, how you move, what you're doing. If you're going to be, you know, doing a bunch of vertical, you probably, you know, a neutral heel counter is probably not going to be awesome for you. So all these things come into play, but it's really, you know, it's not even like if I put dart fish markers all over somebody, watch them run on a treadmill, I'm still probably going to be remiss trying to put them in a shoe to change mechanics or help their mechanics. Because again, think of if I said, you know, think of it like glasses. So you go to a, an optometrist, optometrist, you know, looks at, you know, does a bunch of different lenses, has you read things and they're like, man, you need this lens. We're not denying that that lens doesn't help today. But what happens with anybody that's worn glasses for a while, your eyes continually degenerate. So the functional approach, which would be called behavioral optometry there would be, hey, we use lenses, but those lenses are going to force your, um, your focus point, um, let's say it's a functional, like you can't converge as well, and that's why it's hard to focus on things that are closer to you. We're gonna use a focus point that does help you based on magnification to see, but it's also gonna change that so your eye is constantly having to converge to see things that you're reading up close. Um, that could be a shoe approach, right? That we say, you know, let's say somebody's dealing with an injury. I tell people all the time, if you had enough money, we would have like 10 pairs of shoes during an injury cycle. And we may start with a motion control shoe based on what's going on, right? Or something else and work our way around those shoes just as aids. But really what should we be working on? 
your foot, your body, the mechanics, the kinematic chain, the technology that's always going to supersede a shoe, right? The, your foot is really complex, and if we can allow the complexity to do what it's supposed to do, adapt, right, to running, rather than you buying a shoe that lets, that basically you're using a shoe to adapt to running, right? Your foot is not doing anything, so it's kind of a cheap way to keep running, but then what are you gonna do? you're usually going to lose running, right? Running is going to be taken from you because you keep going through these injury cycles because what do we see a lot of people do? They find that one shoe that they're like, man, I have no injuries. And then that shoe model gets changed, right? Or that shoe, for whatever reason, worked for a while and doesn't work anymore. Because why? Your nervous system is always creating efficiency. And adaptation is, a lot, is what allows us to become efficient quickly, but that also allows us to fall into that habit, right? And once you fall into the habit, those sensory organs, your feet are looking for something different. So it's not like you, you know, you've heard the adage for runners that you should cycle shoes because of the compression that takes place and the ethylvinyl acetate and the foam of the shoe and you need to change them. Really, yeah, it is the compression factor that you're not gonna have as much dampening load, but let's say I'm running in minimalist shoes. Why does it matter then if I don't have a lot of uh, cushion underfoot, why would I be cycling shoes? Maybe just for different input, right? That like, you know, that shoe feels a little bit different. Your foot has to adapt differently. We know that if I'm looking to hypertrophy a muscle, I can't do the same thing month, week over week or month over month. You're going to stall, not because of the physiology of the muscle, but it's literally the nervous system adapts and creates efficiency, which it kind of plateaus us, which is seems disadvantageous but it's advantageous because what is a human designed to do stay alive conserve energy and be safe and that's what your nervous system is always doing so again to review what you should be doing to go after this you should be looking for a shoe that's comfortable right looking for a shoe that matches what you're going to be doing right am i going to be you know pounding the pavement and i've never run in a minimal shoe you probably shouldn't start there but do you go to a giant hoka that's going to just, you know, there's been studies with gymnasts that um, look at the density of the floor foam and the denser the foam, the more impact they incur. You would think that would be backwards, right? Like a squishy floor. Ooh, it's nice. No, because your body now thinks, and in particular your foot, that you can run into that foam really hard and all of those ground reaction forces are displaced up through your body. So again, not telling anybody to go out and buy a minimalist shoe, but if your foot works like a foot and the rest of your, your joints and tissues can adapt over time, now you can really wear whatever shoe you want. And what we want to pick is a shoe that's comfortable, but also allows your body, in particular your foot and ankle, to work like a foot and ankle. Um, so that's my big piece of advice. Now, there's a lot of other parts to this equation. And what I'd like to talk about in the next solo cast is how do you work on those issues of getting your foot, ankle, and the rest of your body to work appropriately which is a, it's a big piece of a question to bite off, but we can have uh, maybe some parameters and markers for what to look for for a uh, maybe a highly adaptive, well-functioning system um, as it pertains, let's say in particular to foot and ankle, and then we can bleed that up the kinematic chain and the knee, hip, core. So I hope that helps some people. I hope it doesn't add, muddy the water too much. But realize, like, we've been studying shoes, and shoes are a highly marketed thing that um, rarely are there. Well, again, statistics don't show that they prevent injury. You go back to those Army studies that showed that increased performance um, and decreased injury came from comfort, not pairing the shoe accordingly. So uh, take it for what it is. I hope you guys learned something that makes you better than before. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.